I've been waiting for God to do something. Okay, I've been waiting um, for the right moment. Okay, now God is starting to bring things together. And as I'm starting to see that, we are going to be learning by the book. We are going to be only opening up the Bible, and we're going to be talking about it. And we're, this this class isn't to teach you how to utter. It's not to teach you how to prophesy. We're not going to be prophesying here. I mean, unless God does a work, you know, and, and I'm not saying it can't happen. I mean, the Holy Ghost can fall in here and things can happen, but that's not the intent here. There is going to be another meeting that the people that want to learn a different way or participate or learn how to use their gifts will have another meeting uh, someplace else where um, you can manifest if God is leading you there. Okay, so um, that's going to be an environment where you're not taught how to do it. Only God can teach you these things, right? I can teach you what the Bible says about it, but I can't teach you how to open your mouth. You know what I mean? God says, open your mouth and I shall fill it, says the Lord, right? This is, this is what he does. They spoke in tongues, right? They opened their mouth. They spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. So the Spirit is the one that has to give you the utterance. You know, you have to be obedient and open your mouth. Okay, and in different environments, you know, there's this thing where, you know, you might even just get a couple words from the Lord. And most people, they keep their mouth shut. They just get a couple words from the Lord and they keep their mouth shut because it's only two words. And they, they think to themselves, boy, I'm going to be really dumb if I can speak out these two words. But no, you speak out those two words and the rest is going to flow. It's just going to start coming out. This is faith. This is how it comes. It's not what's up in here. It's what comes out. It comes from here. And the Lord just brings it out. And, or, or prophetic prayer. You start praying for somebody, you don't know what's going on in their life, especially if it's somebody you've never even met before. You, 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 you team up with somebody on the street, right? And, you're, and you, just, you start praying for them. You don't know what's in their life, but all of a sudden now, if you listen to what you're praying, you'll know what's going on in their life. This is how it works. Um, so we will have, be having a meeting that... Nobody has to teach you what to do. You're just going to do it. And then the teaching or the learning comes in where if you ask the question, you say, hey, what is that I just did? You know, Then somebody's going to say, well, you did the same thing I did. You did the same thing he did, she did. Because you know, God showed you how to do it. No man told you what to do or how to do it. Um, it was God. And then you have the confirmation with your brothers and sisters that, you know what, I did the same thing. It's how I did it. This is how it came to pass. What? You're held accountable for it, but you're going to learn a lot more now. Um, and the same thing, brother. You're going to excel in it. You're going to move fast. Um, you know, I, I was amazed when we started talking Friday night about um, um, lack of knowledge about spiritual things that I thought that just everybody knew, like impartation, for example. You know, because we talked, you know, our uh, first and second Timothy, we talked about impartation. Romans chapter one, we talked about impartation, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about um, Jesus, um, you know, preaching impartation to disciples. You know, it was a good thing. Yes. Um, okay, so uh, impartation, um, I long to see you, that I might impart to you some spiritual gifts, the end it might be established. Um, Paul said to Timothy, um, stir up the gift that is in you, that was given you by the putting out of my hands, or the putting out of my hands of the elders as well, right? Yeah. So there's an imparting. Uh, Jesus said, when you enter into the city, let your peace be on it. Or uh, if you enter into this house, let your peace be on it. Well, when we say, let, he says, let your peace be on this house. Then he says, if the house be worthy, let your peace remain on it. But if the house be not worthy, let your peace return to you. See, this is impartation. This is where we can impart to other people um, something that God has given us. Uh, oh, Francine, you have a testimony. Yes, absolutely. Um, it has to do with tongues. Um, last week, a couple of people were talking about, you know, is tongues real? How do you, uh, they didn't feel like it was real when they were doing it. And I spoke with you in conversation and said, I have a hard time feeling like it's real. So I, I do it out of uh, feeling like I'm supposed to be speaking in tongues, but it just didn't feel real. And you said, well, try it at work when you're having a hard time speaking tongues and see how it works for you. And, uh, it's sure enough. I mean, I, I have a very, um, crazy kind of job. Um, there's a lot of hustle and bustle. There's a lot of negativity around me. And when I came across, you know, stuff that even had the potential <laughs> of being um, negative or hostile or whatever, I would just kind of, you know, just start speaking in tongues. And actually, I ended up singing in tongues. And, and it did. The, it, there was a calmness about me that I didn't usually have um, that helped in that situation. And again, I, I started wondering, well, I just kind of felt like the unction, well, why don't you look up a couple of words? <laughs> and uh, and I looked up one, and uh, it turned out the word was peace. 
So I said, well, you know, I don't feel like I'm supposed to go any, push it any further than that. But it's just a confirmation of, yes, it's real. Yes, it works. Yes, you do it. And it's the enemy saying, don't do it. It's not real. And uh, so we don't, so that we don't reap the benefits of it. Amen. So this is the thing. Um, you do what works. Right? right. If, it, if it doesn't work, don't do it. But if it works, do it. Right. So he that speaks in tongues edifies himself, strengthens himself, builds himself up. So we all have a tongue. Okay. We all have a language that God gives us. Okay. So if, if we speak in that language and it edifies us, it builds us up, it fights our battles for us, it strengthens us. Right. Well, that's good. Now, it, you know, and the devil might lie to you and say, well, this must be something you're making up. Okay. Well, and I can do it all day. I can make something up. Right. Okay. Let me make it up. Uh, puka. Okay. Puka. Does it do it? It almost makes me laugh. Puka, right? Does it build me up? Does it strengthen me? No, it doesn't. But when the Spirit gives me the utterance, wow, what does it do for me? It fights my battles. It, it's like, uh, now, once, you'll, you'll get to the place, but you know, once, once your head is clear, you know, the Bible says be ready to revenge all disobedience once your obedience has been fulfilled, right? So the thoughts that hit your head. Well, I, I battle all day. If, if I'm around somebody that um, swears, right? That doesn't go in my head and stay there. No, I, I don't even let it in my head. Because why? Because I mumble and tongue underneath my breath. Okay? And and I don't let it in there. It's fighting my battle. See? It doesn't go in there. Somebody takes the Lord's name and bang. I'm underneath my breath. I'm speaking in tongues. And um, what does that do for me? It makes me brainless. Okay? Because, look, there there are tests and studies of enough, and not by Christians. Okay? There are brain... You know, there's people out there that scan brains, and that's what they do. That's what they love to do. They research, Right? Um, go, it, it was like CBS or NBC News, one of those. It's on YouTube. Look at it. This is legit, man. This guy put put people into one of these, uh, what do you call uh, MRI, is that what you call it? The big thing, they do the brain scans? They put people in there. They put Buddhists in there. They put tongue-speaking Christians in there. You know what the amazement was? The amazement was is that when they, the Buddhists, they put them in there and they show, the doctor shows, look, there's something weird about this. He shows the brain scan and he shows the increased brain activity. The Buddhists, increased brain activity. But when they put the Christian in there, get this, little to no brain activity. Little to no brain activity. It's coming from here. It's coming from here. Little to no brain activity. So how can you bring every thought into the obedience of Christ? I was listening to a preacher one time. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm this thing where, what did I do with my phone? I'm the, I, I got my phone with me all the time, right? And I'm, I'm sitting there listening to this preacher, and this preacher says uh, that we think, and you can Google this, it's true, because I did right, right when I'm hearing the preaching, 58.6 thoughts per minute. We think, on an average, everybody thinks 58.6 thoughts per minute. And I'm like, no way. I'm thinking myself, because I'm comparing this, right? I don't know about everybody else, but me? And I'm, I'm, I, I used to talk to myself. I don't talk to myself no more. I go, Lord, 58 points. No, I know it's not true. It can't be true. And, and so I Googled it. Oh, sure enough, 58.6 thoughts per minute. Then the Lord says, remember that video you watched about two years ago? Remember that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, little to no brain activity. That's why I don't think 58.6. You know why? Because I speak in tongues a lot. Well, a lot. Um, a lot. You, you know, and then I can testify things because Paul said I speak in tongues more than you all. Right? And since he said, I speak in tongues more than you all, then I know Paul spoke in tongues in his sleep. Okay? In his sleep, he, sp he spoke in tongues. He didn't just talk in his sleep. Okay? They called Paul a babbler. Come, let us hear what this babbler has to say. He was babbling all the time. You know, but I know he spoke in tongues in his sleep because my wife will tell you I speak in tongues in my sleep. And I will testify to you that she speaks in tongues in her sleep. And I know if Paul said, because it's the word of God, I speak in tongues more than you all, that includes me, he spoke in tongues in his sleep too. Okay, so it's this thing about being brainless. So I, I like to care about that once in a while. You know, it's like, how do you bring every thought into the obedience of Christ? How do you cast down every imagination in every wicked thing? Okay, and, and bring every thought into captivity without tongues. I don't know. I don't know if it would be possible. But I do know that um, when I when I face anxiety, you know, if I if I get hit with anxiety. I speak in tongues, it goes away. Now, that wasn't always. There used to be a time where I would get hit with anxiety. I'd just look at my wife and I'd say, oh, sweet, I need to pray. And I'd go hit my knees and i start crying out to God. i get up after a few minutes. It's all gone. i got peace. Praise the Lord. But I, I very seldom do like that anymore because I'm always speaking in tongues. 
Um, but it, it is. It, it's, it's a help. Now, Linda, I heard her ministering the other day to somebody on the phone that, you know, had called and she was talking to. And, and I loved it. I never even heard this one, but I told, I told Linda, I said, I'm going to use that. I like that. I liked that a lot. Because this person was asking her about tongues. And, you know, like, well, what is tongues for you? And Linda just says, um, well, she says it's like breathing. Mm-hmm. It's like breathing. It's like breathing in the spirit. See, we breathe carnally, you know. Mm-hmm. But... You know, if we're Christians walking in the Spirit, right, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh and walking in victory, it's like breathing. Tongues is like breathing. You know, it's um, it's a good analogy. Um, now, before I go on, uh, Brother, would you like to share a testimony? I have one that happened a few months ago. Not I know what it happened. is, and I'd love for you to share and it. I, I know Luz heard it, and I know you've heard it, and I don't think anybody else can, can I can I can I introduce you first? Is that okay? okay. So um, this brother um, about um, and now the testimony he's going to tell you is not the same testimony I heard from the beginning. This guy has some awesome testimonies. God has really moved in his life. I mean, awesomely moved in his life. I was in awe when I heard his first testimony, and 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 I'm like, you know what? You should share that testimony with somebody. You know, and so I invite, I, I, I go to churches, you know, and, I, and so I've told some churches about him, and, and they've invited him to come and give his yeah. testimony, right? So he's been to several churches and given his testimony. He's on Michael B. Oslin's radio program. He taped him for two testimonies, and he'll be playing those. Uh, and, and then even just people hearing about him giving his testimony now, he's um, been over to Next Level. They invite him to a men's group there, giving his testimony there. I mean, this is just an awesome thing that God is doing in his life, you know, but... Um, in this, in him giving his testimony, he travels for work. That's the one I think you're going to say, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the one. one. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to say, I talk about it when I stand up. So hi, everybody, I'm Mark. Um, I, I travel for work, um, and this is, this is all about God. It's not about me. I've been blessed to be able to testify to the good works of God. <clears throat> it's like an amazing happening. So I travel for work. I, I go to Minnesota sometimes. And I got stuck over the weekend with a lot of problems, so I ended up having to stay there. So I looked for a church, and I, I, and I found a nice church, and, and I went. And it was really, I liked it there. It was a really good setting, felt good, felt the presence there. So if I ever have to stay again over the weekend, I, I'm coming back. So a few months later, yes, I'm back there again. So anyway, I, I know where I'm going, so I, I went in. I went early because I wanted to talk. So I walked in the, the front door. And it, I, I, I felt really good. I felt really healthy, good, clear head, no ailments. I was, wasn't thinking about me at all, right? So I walked in, and there was a greeting table, and I, I, I was greeted, and, and uh, this wasn't long. I had like a crowd around me, and they wanted to know my, my story and how I got saved. So I told that story, and I could tell that sometime if you like. It's another amazing story. And uh, they, they said, you're just like a walking miracle. I'm so glad that you came. I hope you come back. And I said, I'd love to come back. And I'm happy to be here. So I, they gave me a coffee cup, and, and, and then I, <coughs> I walked into the sanctuary. And I felt like I had, I had a job to do. I wasn't just going in to sit down. I had a job to do. So I, and something was like interfering with my thought process to take a seat. So I just stood in the back for a second, and I, I just had to go sit where I was told to sit. So I, I just went down, I found the aisle, this is the aisle, and I, not this seat, and there's many seats I walked by, and I and this is the seat. And there was one seat left, and there was a young lady sitting there with crutches, and what I didn't know is at that moment, she's sitting in the audience praying to God for God to show himself to him to her, praying for some kind of help, help me, Show yourself to me, and that, and this is how this got spoken to me. So I sat next to her, and her eyes were like this big. It was an appointment. It was like I came to the appointment. Mm-hmm. So she started unloading all her problems, and she, and she has uh, porous cartilage all through her body, so all her joints are messed up. <laughs> messed up was really kind of emotional. Actually, she's in a lot of pain. So anyway, and I, I, said, I said, my dear, I said, I had a very rocky early life. And what was wrong is I didn't have Jesus as the foundation of my life. I was the foundation of, of my life. And when I crashed, I had trouble. I had nobody to lean on. I just crashed. I, so I, I, and then, anyway, the pastor started to speak. So I stopped. 
And the pastor said word for word what I just said to her, exactly. And the, the mother and the girl, they just looked at me and I said, can you come to dinner? We want to hear more. And I said, yes, I'd love to. So after church, I got their address. And after work Monday, I, you know, got changed and I went over to their house. Now, I know it's a problem family, right? It's not going, I'm not going there for rec recreation. So I walked in, I saw the, the little girl and, uh, and the mother, and then I saw the teenage son, like 16 years old, can't talk, like severely retarded, drooling, and, and, I, and I guess I talked to the mother a little bit, and I guess the husband had left the family because they couldn't deal with the kids, and it's really, it's kind of heart-wrenching. So anyway, then the boyfriend came in, and uh, he was a construction guy, non-believer kind of a guy, you know, tips a few, not that it makes him a bad guy, but a anyway, so he, he came in, we cut some hamburgers on the grill, and we small talked, and the girl had made me a cake, the little girl with the crutches, she's really sweet, ah, she's just loving to death, actually, and so anyway, I knew it was my time. So I said, I'd like to continue where I was in, in church, and the, the mother, uh, Michelle, she says, that would be great, because I, I was hoping that you would. So I told many stories about the good works of God. I told a story about, there was a couple that I, I knew, um, and the, 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 the woman had got leukemia, and I didn't know this, for 30 years, and she was declining, and they lost their house and because of the doctor bills, and... They ended up living with their children, and she was incapacitated for two years. She couldn't walk. She was like, she was dying. And uh, we, I, I heard about it, so in my cool group, we prayed for her for restoration, for healing, over and over and over again for about six months. And then I ran into the mutual friend again, and she goes, Mark, you wouldn't believe it. She goes, Diane's like, up. Ah. You know, she's on crutches, but she's up. I'm like, that's great. I said, praise God, that's wonderful. And then maybe like three or four months later, I saw that same person again, and she goes, you wouldn't even know that she was ever sick. You know, so it's like, it's unexplainable. You know, if somebody's sick for that long, and just, it's unexplainable. There's only one explanation. So anyway, I was telling a bunch of stories like that, and the boyfriend goes, well, she goes, I don't believe anything I can't touch and feel and measure. And I'm there, well, sir, you won't, you won't find that. But what you will find is the evidence of the good works of God. It's all around you every day. If you choose to see it or you choose to ignore it, it's there. Every single day, it's there. And uh, so, and I'm there, sir, I'm like, please, it's time for you to step up and join with this family. If you, if you care about this family, you love this woman, Please join with this family and seek God. This family needs strength more than any family I think I've ever seen. She's just a saint with all the problems she has. She needs help. She needs Jesus. She needs you to join with her. And so he didn't like that very much, and he got up and he left. <laughs> so the, the mother went like this, and they, I'm sorry, but I had to say it. She goes, yep, it had to be said. So... We talked a little bit, and then the, the guy came back, and he sat down, and he goes, okay, I'll do it. And I'm like, well, what is it that you want to do? He goes, I'm going to, I'll go to church with, with her. And I'm like, that's great. I said, don't go because I said it, or I want you to go. Go for the right reason. Go to seek God. Don't go there and think about fixing your brakes on your truck. Really, just go there and, and seek God. Really seek God. And I, I hope that you find him. And, and then uh, he goes, I don't know who God is. I don't know. And I'm like, that's all the more reason for you to join with her and seek. She does know who God is. That, that woman does. And just join with her. It would be the best thing that ever happened in your life. So that was kind of the, kind of wrapped up. And that was kind of the end of the night. And after that night, I thought, why did that happen like that? Because I never had that kind of an experience like that, you know, get directed to do something like that. And I, I think it's, I made time for God. I, I wasn't thinking about my brakes on my truck and all that. And I didn't have a sore something, you know, that I was worried about. I was just free, good, strong. I felt good, awake, and I made time for God. I just was awake and aware. 
and I, I let God direct me and use me in such a way. And I never contacted the family because she's a divorced mom and it's kind of inappropriate. Um, but I, 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 I really want to, I really want to see how they're doing. Um, but it was, it was an amazing story. And so now, as, just, as, just as, a, as a recap, when I go somewhere, I'm, a, I'm aware and I expect something. I look for something to happen. Mm. You know, instead of just go there and think about me and go have a seat in the chair and listen to the pastor, I see if uh, there's something I'm supposed to do. Am I supposed to do something here or, or not? You know, maybe I can't do everything, but if there's something that I can do that he needs me for, I'm available. And, and, and I'm gonna um, point out a couple things here first, uh, as, so just so we can get a structure of what's going on. Um, the the book of Corinthians is a letter that was written uh, by Paul, or more dictated by Paul. He's the one that spoke it. There were actually four people that penned this book. There were four apostles, scribes. Uh, that penned what Paul spoke. Now Paul, um, according to the last chapter in 1 Corinthians, um, he gave his own salutation like he does in many letters, by his own hand. Okay, So he did write with his own hand the salutation, uh, the goodbyes of this letter. But other than that, the letter was written by four other uh, fellow laborers and scribes. Um, so in this, you, you um, picture also that Paul is actually dictating this letter. Because as we come through it, um, Lord willing, we're going to see where Paul actually prophesies. Okay, when he quotes scripture, it looks like he's quoting scripture, but then uh, if you go back to the scripture, you're going to notice that it's um, second person, and here it's first person, when, it's, when the scriptures are quoted. Okay, so this, you know, he actually does even come out and prophesy. Um, Paul, when he writes this letter, and he's written this letter to the Corinthians, um, he's they already wrote him a letter. He's answering their letter. So what we have is we have the answers. We don't have the questions. Okay, so we can only um, guess at or uh, come to conclusions of what those questions were that the Corinthians asked him. Now, as we come up to spiritual gifts, the first place that we find spiritual gifts, I mean, we, we find where you come behind in no gift and like this, but the topic of spiritual gifts starts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in the first verse. Now, he starts out, chapter, uh, and then he ends the spiritual gifts chapters with chapter 14 in the last verse. Okay, so pictorially with me notice, there's the first verse that we just read, and then over in chapter 14 is the last verse in the last chap the last verse in the last uh, in, in chapter 14. There wasn't chapters back then, right? Because it was all one letter. Right. So what we're talking about is a topic, and we clearly see the topics beginning and ending. So I believe that the the breakage uh, the the breaking up of the chapters when they were made later on that they were done properly. Right. Um, you know, but either way, we start in 12:1 and we end with um, 14. However many verses are. 38, 40. 40, okay. So we end with 40. Okay, so what we're, what we're noticing here, though, um, is he starts talking about spiritual gifts, and he ends talking about spiritual gifts. Now, this is what he says, and I think this is very important. The first thing he says is, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Okay? Do you know what he ends it with? If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Okay? There, that's, that's important. Um, in fact, he says, now... Um, if any man seem to be, if any man, um, if, if any man um, think him, thinketh himself to be a prophet or even spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. And then if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Okay. So another thing, Jesus said, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments, right? If you love me, keep my commandments. Paul, elsewhere in Corinthians, he, he says, um, now, uh, uh, concerning a virgin, I have no commandment from the Lord, right? A commandment from the Lord, okay? But he says, now these things, these are commandments from the Lord. And, and in another place, if any man be contentious, we have no such custom, neither in the churches of God. But he, he breaks these things up into commandments of the Lord, and then things that I have the Spirit of God, I think I know what's right, and so I believe that this is the right way to go, but that's not what he says here. If any man... Um, think of himself to be prophet or spiritual. Let, so some people claim to be spiritual, right? Some people claim to be, uh, let's do it, Baptist, congregational, 
uh, Presbyterian, Methodist. A lot of people claim to be spiritual, but they have to, according to Paul, right, acknowledge that these are the commandments of the Lord. Now, that tells me that this is pretty important. Okay, but he does start out, just like he said, if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. As far as the, uh, he says, now, brethren, concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you ignorant. And then he ends it with, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Okay, and, and then forbid not to speak in tongues was the main thing, because it seems like he's really coming down in tongues. Why? Okay, because as we even look at this, um, okay, so, and I think it's important that even as I read this and show you now, because uh, really what I want to show you is I want to show you what's for you, um, what could possibly be for you, because do you know that, first of all, everybody in this room has been given something, and it's right here, okay, and then, there, there, so there's gifts mentioned, right, there's gifts and manifestations, now, not everybody um, has in the way we break up the gifts, there are some that not everybody has, but there are some that everybody has, okay? Without, without exception, okay? So um, as, as we look at this and as we go through, we see that um, there's certain things that you have to accept. And, and if you want to dig in the scriptures, you want me to dig in it with you, you want me to show you, it's like at this time, Christians spoke in tongues. They all spoke in tongues or there was something wrong with them. And, and when they found people that didn't speak in tongues, they laid hands on them and then they spoke in tongues. Um, when uh, in Acts chapter 19, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. They're disciples, right? They're disciples, right? He says, finding certain disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Now, why would Paul ask him a question like that? Look, I know, I'm in Paul's shoes. I sit back and I look, and, and he's looking at these guys. They're disciples. you got to be disciples. Well, first of all, if they're disciples, if, if you're going to, I, I can probably list this many churches... That would be an improper question for him to ask. Because if they're disciples, and he's perceiving them to be disciples, they already got the Holy Ghost. Okay. Right? No. He says, I, I got to look back. He says like this. He's like, hmm, I wonder what it is. What do you think? And he's probably has some people he's consulting with. and like this. He's like, something there. I wonder, if they, I wonder if they didn't get baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. Hey, you guys. Did you receive the Holy Spirit since you believed? We never heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Never heard of the Holy Ghost. He says, what? What were you baptized to then? John's baptism. Oh, well, didn't you listen to John? Or, you know, you, you might be even preaching the baptism of John right now. You're preaching repentance. But what was the real preaching? That there was one that comes after me, that's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to loose, and he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now it says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Twelve people. It says the number was twelve. So twelve people. Okay, so you see, what I'm saying is they showed the way, like we do today, um, as the Lord teaches us. We show the way of the Lord more perfectly, because we have that with Apollos. Uh, we have that with um, Aquila and Priscilla. You know, where these were all people from the baptism of John, and Paul came... Paul came around him, and, he's, and it says that they showed them the way of the Lord more perfectly. Um, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. And this was the promise. And when you look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the, this promise, it says, that this is the promise of the Holy Ghost. That you believe, you're baptized in water, and now you have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay? And, and, and this, this time, was also evidence with speaking in tongues. Now, I'm not saying that the tongues are always the evidence of the Holy Spirit. I'm not one of those, okay? But I'm saying that that's what happened. And as that happened, then he said that this promise, this promise of the Holy Spirit, is to you, is to your fathers, and to all those that are far off. It's to you, your fathers, it's to your children, and all those that are far off. I, uh, we are those that are far off. And then every place you see after that, and, and you find <laughs> where the Holy Ghost is given, you're going to see that they believed, except for one place, that they believed, that they were water baptized, and then they received the Holy Spirit. Okay, now the Samaritans, they were a lot like people nowadays, the Samaritans, because they were always beat up, you know, like spiritually, they were pushed back. The Jews, um, they were the dirt of the earth, the scum of the earth. You know, we, we, we find stories. I mean, how do you deal with somebody like that, that is so rejected? They, well, salvation is of the Jews, the Samaritan woman said it to well, right? And, and it's like, and then the one, well, even the dogs can eat, 
you know, from the crumbs of the master's table, right? And Jesus said, great is your faith, right? So these Samaritans were so beat up, and so, and, and, and the Holy Ghost didn't fall on them like it did on, on the Gentiles and how it did on the apostles. So it says, after, after they were baptized, they were astonished that they didn't just receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So they sent Peter and John down, who laid hands on them, and then they received the Holy Spirit. And then Simon the sorcerer, when he saw that through the laying out of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, then he said, let me give you money that I can buy this gift so that I can have that great power. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was definitely, you know, manifestation. You know, the, he sees, what, what does he see? He sees them laying hands. He sees them speaking in tongues. Um, and this is, this is the way it, it always is, except for the time with the Gentiles. And then we didn't see them believe, get baptized in water, and receive the Holy Ghost. We see a, a little bit different. Um, and a lot of people that preach the Holy Ghost, and they preach this thing about believing and being water baptized and then receiving the Holy Ghost, they'll leave that scripture out. Um, but there's no reason to leave it out, because what happens is um, they believe, the Holy Ghost falls on them, and then Peter says, can any man forbid water, that they shouldn't be baptized, they receive the Holy Ghost like us. They can't just skip this, so they have to be water baptized too. So in that case, uh, they believed... They got the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues, and then they got water baptized. So um, there's a lot with the Corinthian church as there. And so I guess I'm building the thing where, see, we, we already know that the Corinthians were all speaking in tongues. Okay, in um, chapter 14 we have, if the whole church, we have a review, okay? If the whole church are, are coming together and you're all speaking in tongues and they're walking an unbeliever, an unlearned person, would he not say that you're mad, you're crazy, right? So, I mean, th this, there's no secret to this. But I believe in the first verse that we have here, uh, we have something that um, he's um, disclosing um, is that the question that they asked. Um, and I believe that the question that they asked, one of the first questions that they asked was, Everybody's speaking in tongues. There's no interpretation. How do we know that they're not speaking devil tongues? How do we know that they're not speaking ungodly things? How do we know that this? And he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, I would not have you ignorant. I, um, you know that you were Gentiles, carried about into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed, and no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. The first thing he wants to do is he wants to alleviate all of this. The, in the book of Proverbs, the prophecy about tongues, it says the preparation of the heart is a man. Proverbs 16.1. The preparation of the heart is a man. The answer of the tongue is from the Lord. You prepare your heart. Right? They speak as the Spirit gives the utterance. You prepare your heart. You make sure your heart's right. Now, if your heart's not right and you, and you start blurting out in tongues, you're probably going to be speaking some pretty ungodly things because Jesus said whatever's <laughs> coming out of the mouth is coming from the heart, right? But you prepare your heart. The, the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. You speak out. Look, if we are seeking God, we shouldn't be afraid of receiving, like, isn't this, doesn't it say the gift of the Holy Ghost? When it says, if a father asks of a son, right, uh, for a piece of bread, is he going to give him a stone? Is he going to give him a dangerous poisonous snake? Is he going to give him a serpent? Um, is he going to give him a, uh, uh, a scorpion? We shouldn't be, how much more are your Heavenly Father going to give good things to them that ask him? Good gifts, it even says the Holy Ghost. And, and, and uh, it's, it's in Luke, and it's... Um, um, what was the other gospel? It's in Luke and it's in Matthew. I think it might be Matthew. Okay, Luke and thank you, Tim. Luke and Matthew. But one place is gifts, and one place is good things, right? Or Holy Spirit and good things, good gifts, good gifts, good gifts. So, you know, we're talking about Jesus said the Holy Spirit would do what? What would the, when we receive the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? It will lead you and guide you into some of the truth. All the Holy Spirit, when it comes, when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's going to lead you and guide you. How is it going to do that? How is it going to lead you and guide you into all truth? That's why we're reading this right now. This is how the Holy Spirit can lead us and guide us into all truth. How, uh, how about the Gentiles being without hope in this world? Why are the Gentiles without hope in this world? Jesus was going to bring revelation to the Gentiles, right? And that, wasn't that the plan? Wasn't from the time that Jesus was two years old? It, um, Simeon? prophesied over him. Anna prophesied over him too, right? And Jesus was going to bring, this was the prophecy over him, he's going to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Well, when did that happen? It didn't happen when he was two. It did, Gentiles, okay? It didn't happen when he was 33 either. It didn't happen during any time that Jesus was there. Do you know that the Gentiles um, didn't even receive the gospel until 
what, 10, 13, 14 years? After uh, 13, 14 years? That's a good question. When Paul turned to the Gentiles? Or, well, actually, Peter with the centurion could be considered the official start, right? Um, you remember when they had the council, Peter says, the Lord through my mouth. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we're talking about one righteous man. Cornelius, right? right? Okay. So how about the go- how about the, the gospel being preached? I mean, going out there from city to city, preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. Thirteen years. That's a good question. Okay. Five years or more, right? Okay. I mean, we can settle at five years, and <laughs> it's not that. The point is, is that yes. Seems like that's the way I read it, the way I understood it, that Paul was out there for 14 years doing that. Um, no, he went into the desert to be to, to learn from the Lord, and then there was a certain point where he was ministering to the Jews, where he turned around and said, "Okay." You think he was in the desert for 14 years? Oh, no. Mm. What did I do? I don't know what you think. I thought you were a shy cat. I'm fine. <laughs> he didn't, uh, Paul didn't go to the uh, apostles at Jerusalem. Everything he received, he says, I received it directly from the Lord. Yeah. Okay, he did not receive, everything he received, he received directly from Jesus. Paul was the man that, uh, in Acts chapter 7, 8, where the light appeared to him, blinded his eyes, um, you know, he, he went and met with some uh, some um, some disciples. Uh, they were instructed to lay hands on him. The scales fell from his eyes. And then after that, he went and spent time with the Lord. The Lord revealed all the revelation to him. And, and he didn't see Peter or the apostles at Jerusalem until much later. And that was when he was already preaching to the Gentiles. And now he, they, they have to, uh, have to meet um, to... I would say at the most, five, because Galatians supposedly was written in 49. AD. And, and, and so he's writing in Galatians 14 years later, and went up again. This is talking about the council where he decided Gentiles are not to be circumcised. Okay, very good. So, so you look at, he had to 35, right, at the latest. Okay, uh, I'm started. good, but here's my point. Here's my point. Who's bringing revelation to the Gentiles? Jesus said, and it was prophesied of Jesus, that he was going to bring revelation to the Gentiles. Jesus spoke to his apostles and his disciples and said that, um, that the Holy Spirit was going to come and, and lead you and guide you into all truth. That, and, and we know that we have the Spirit of Christ in us. They that have not the Spirit of Christ are none of his, right? So we have the Spirit of Christ. We have God writing the laws in our minds and our hearts. He's put his Spirit inside of us. You know, but to realize that this is a work for the Gentiles. So that, what, what is it? The Gentiles are going to, um, okay, the church, the bride has made herself ready, right? Uh, um, Daniel says God's people will do great exploits. See, we're looking forward to a revival, aren't we? I, I am. I'm looking forward to a great revival. Daniel said that God's people would do great exploits in those days. And I see this, and I have this vision of um, the, the Jews having their... They're blindfolded right now, right? Well, why are they blindfolded? You know, it's like they wouldn't be obedient to God. They wouldn't be obedient to God. They turn back. They're stiff-necked people. They're rebellious. The Lord says, hey, wait a minute. Let me show you something. He covers their eyes. He says, wait a minute. The day with the Lord is a thousand years. But he, he says, hold on a minute. Let me cover your eyes a minute. And he says, here, wait. Let me put their laws in, you know, my laws in their mind and in their hearts. I'm going to write them there. I'm going to put my spirit inside them. Now they're going to do this. They do these great exploits. He says, okay, that's what I wanted you to do. That's what I wanted you to do. So he brings revelation to the Gentiles. How is he, okay, the Gentiles without hope in this world. How is he going to, do you know that, do you know that the Jews were all programmed? Do you know that God programmed them? Do you know that from, from to the age of 12, they memorized, every Jewish male memorized the Torah memorized the entire Torah. Then he went on to memorize the oral Torah. The Talmud? The Talmud? Uh, well, not really the Talmud. We know it. Um, there's a lot missing in the Talmud. I mean, this the, the oral law that they had then. I mean, they, they, they wrote down uh, a few centuries, uh, basically, oral tradition before Christ and a, couple, a few centuries after Christ. Um, you know, but that... That's not really, that's a bunch of stories and stuff. It's not really 
what was given at that time as the as the oral Torah. But they all memorized the oral Torah. But then and then after that, they still weren't done. Do you do you know it was a young man, forty years old, young man? Okay. Do you do you know how many how many people in Job? How many people? <laughs> You know, when Job had his afflictions, by the way, the oldest book in the Bible, when Job had his afflictions, how many people comforted Job? Who was that comfort animal? How many, there was three, right? The Bible says there was three. There was four. Yeah. And yeah, chapter 32, we just read about Elihu, right? Elihu. Um, and, and the reason why he's not mentioned, uh, he was like, he was underage. He was like 40, okay? And, and discounted, okay? Um, you know, because it's not until 40 years old that you start now to sit at the feet of somebody like Gamal or uh, Halal or one of the, either a Babylonian teacher or a, you know, teacher in Jerusalem, you know, somebody who teaches the spiritual principles of the Torah. Um, so, um, now Paul had reached us. Timothy was awesome, you know, for the Word of God, and he had things memorized. Um, and, you know, so from this, I mean, you know, because Paul said, Right, uh, you have known the scriptures from a child, right? Okay, so we know that Timothy was, and, and I love to think about them revelating sometimes, right? Because now, how many people here read their Bible and get revelation? How many people read their Bible and get revelation? Okay, awesome. So you read your Bible and you get revelation. How, do, how does that happen? It happens like this. Watch. I, I, oh yeah, well, cool. Look at that verse. Now, um, it's good. Thirty-one thousand two hundred and forty verses in the Bible. Now, what's the math to this? I get this verse and I get this revelation. I go, whoa, right? Whoa. But now, tomorrow, I'm way over here in this other book and I go, oh, wait a minute. That goes with this. Mm -hmm. What's the matter yeah. to that? Yeah, These yeah. go together. Mm -hmm. I mean, God's, by His Spirit, is leading and guiding, right? Mm -hmm. But the Gentiles, they didn't have this. They didn't have access to a Torah scroll most times. They, you know, unless they went to... The, they're not going to be able to study it like you study your Bible. So I want to ask you, how did they get revelation? If Jesus is going to bring revelation to them, how do they get the revelation? The Holy Ghost. How? Yes, how? Okay. He ascended on high, he led captivity captive, he gave gifts to men. I mean, how else could they start right now? Let's go preach the gospel. Hey, Paul, come on, let's go. Okay, let's go to this city, this city, this city, this city, this city, this city, this city. This city. And now they're around the... Okay, Wow, that was good. Okay, now let's go ordain elders. Huh? And, the, and then they, they come to a city and they say, hey, in the time that you should be a teacher, you have need to teach you again the first principles. What are you talking about? Why? Because they have the Holy Spirit that's supposed to be leading them and guiding them into all truth. Um, when we look at these chapters, what we're doing is we're actually peeking the door of the first century church. Mm -hmm. Now, we can do that. We can open the door and we can look in and say, that's what the church is supposed to look like. Right? Well, we need to align ourselves with that. Okay? I mean, okay. I, I should rephrase that. We don't have to. Okay? I have to. Okay? This has been my vision. Open the door, look inside. Oh, Lord! Why has Mike been over, over 300 churches when I started out? I started looking. Just, well, okay, let me go find them. They're not there. Paul, he's sitting here, and, you know, he's yeah. like, um, Where's the Torah? Where's the Torah in Paul? It's not here. It's here. Now, what happens when God's Spirit comes inside of that? Because God's Spirit came into you. Right? God's Spirit came into you, and you're doing it now, right? That's because it's here. With Paul, it wasn't here. It was here. The Gentiles don't have this. Paul's like, whoa. You know that thing you do with that verse here? And that verse here? And you go, Whoa. Paul's over there like, whoa, 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 Timothy. He says, yeah, I got it, man. I got it. Cool. I got that. Yeah. Cool. Wow. I mean, they could just start to say a verse and it connects and another verse and it connects, you know, and this is how the revelation works, right? But the Gentiles were without hope. That's why this needed to happen. Because without supernatural intervention, it just wasn't going to happen, Okay. So that's where I'd like to um, begin this, is, um, is just the fact that he starts it out with, um, don't be afraid, if you ask for bread, you're not going to get a stone, you're not going to get a poisonous snake, you're not going to get stung by a scorpion. And, um, and, and I, I will relate one, 
just just a half of a story to this. I had a brother one time that didn't know anything about that. You know, he was like those disciples of John that said, I never heard of the Holy Ghost before. And then uh, he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And this guy's talking with the most beautiful tongue. It sounded like perfect Latin. It's like awesome, awesome, awesome. Friend calls him up. You know, friend from one of these strict churches that I'm telling you about, you know, and he's like, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. He's so happy. I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking in tongues. I got a tongue, you know. And brother says, you did? Where did you get that? How did that happen? I was over at Mike and Linda's house. Oh, he says, you didn't get it at church, huh? No, I might be sure, be sure you didn't get one of them devil tongues, though. If you didn't get it at church, be sure you didn't get one of them devil tongues. This poor guy, you know, already a slow thinker, but he comes over and he says, he didn't spoke in tongues in days. And he's like, Mike, he says, can you speak in a devil tongue? I'm like, oh, this guy has such the, the, the most purest heart, the most purest heart. Um, the mo he's the most sensitive guy. And, um, you know, uh, I, I, I want to tell you that, you know, I, I know I, sh I shared the story already last week anyway. But, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skim through this, and I want to show you guys. Now, you have this paper, because we're, we're, we are going to have to close in a minute, but you have this paper, and I'd like you to, uh, to skim over this paper and see, because what I've done for you is I've split this up into um, a couple different sections so that you can understand what I'm reading here. And so, um, starting in verse 3, is it? No, starting in verse 4, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. So there are gifts and administrations. There are diversities of operations, um, but the same, but it is the same God that worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit. So see, we see operations and manifestations, and we see gifts. Now the gifts and the um, administrations are those that are spoken of in Ephesians and later on in this chapter, in, verse, in chapter 12. The gifts and the administrations are the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers. Now, they utilize the manifestations, and they use um, utilize... Um, different functions of manifestation. So, for example, an apostle is likely going to have all 12 manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Um, a prophet is going to have six manifestations of the Holy Spirit. He's gonna, because the 12 manifestations, as we learn, and I, I marked it at the bottom of the page, uh, that there's nine manifestations. Okay, those nine manifestations are split up into three categories. There, uh, and most people call these gifts, and we, it's okay to call them gifts, but understand that if we're talking just the Bible... Uh, the gifts are what God gives to the church, and those are the, um, the the administrations or the offices in the church. Okay, and then the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, the manifestations uh, that people call gifts today, the twelve, um, those are utilized by these administrations or by you. Okay, so not everybody has an administration gift. Not everybody's a pastor. Not everybody's a prophet. Okay, so a prophet is going to need if you have that office. If that's you know the administration, you have that office, then you're going to have um, three revelation gifts, which are a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning spirits. And you also have the three vocal gifts, or the tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and the prophecy. And those do further break down, and we can get into that in later classes. Um, if somebody was an evangelist, he might mix gifts where he'd have like a power gift. Oh, because you have utterance gifts, gifts that are with the mouth. You have uh, revelation gifts, three revelation gifts, and then you have three power gifts. So that's like miracles. Um, healing and um, healing, miracles and faith, great faith. So um, somebody with an evangelistic gift, if God called you to be an evangelist, more than likely you're um, going to work in a word of knowledge and you're going to work in healing um, you know, as you're evangelizing. A lot of other gifts can be used in, in, that, in that ministry. But more than likely, at least those two, if you have a, even a gift of healing, it can work together with a word of knowledge. So... Um, so there are um, administrations and there are gifts. So not everybody has the administration gifts, okay? And the, um, uh, the manifestations, which are these, um, to one is given. And, and I want you to see, well, I should probably just read it straight from the Word. But the manifestation of the Spirit, are people following with me in verse 7 now? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Does it say that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to certain individuals or some people? Okay, so we're talking about the church here in context. Okay, We are talking about the body of Christ. Every believer, 
Okay, now, when in Mark chapter 16, when it talks about believers, it says, these signs will follow them that believe in my name, though. Uh, they'll cast out devils, they'll speak with tongues, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll, they'll um, take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them, right? So it gives these, um, these things to believers. So we're all believers, we're all in the same body, and now it starts talking about the manifestations of the Spirit, which are given to everybody. See, the, the, the gifts or the, the callings of God aren't for everybody as far as a pastor or an apostle like that. But these gifts are for everyone. It says, for the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, what is he talking about? What gifts? Because in churches, I'll hear, I'll, 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 I'll hear people say, a lot of churches that don't have a lot of gifts active in the church, and, and I find this really funny, I find it comical almost, I can laugh, I mean, I can really chuckle, right? Because I chuckle at home sometimes, but I don't want to chuckle in front of them. Cause, you know, but um, but I, I go in there and it's like, Everybody has a gift of helps, you know? And I'm like, well, first of all, that's an administration gift, okay? But um, they, they all have the gift of helps, you know? And, and, and then they're telling you when you start talking about spiritual gifts, oh, well, we don't all have the same gifts. I'm like, well, then why do you have the same gifts? <laughs> you all have the gift of helps, right? Because they all think, well, people want to stay away from the supernatural or the supernatural. It's not anything that seems hard, right? Okay, so, um, so here, the, the gifts that he's talking about that we all have, that each one of us, so you guys start thinking about this now, because it says here now, if, if you have a if, if you have a calling uh, to to be in the ministry, you're going to have more than one gift here, okay? You know, and you can desire more than one gift, even if you're not in the ministry, okay? That's okay, uh, but we're not talking about being in the ministry here. We're talking about everybody, okay? We're talking about everybody in this room, okay? Everybody in this room. These, not the gift of helps, okay? These are your gifts. Are you ready? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. What's the word of wisdom? Who can tell me what the word of wisdom is? Let's get some interaction the, here. The, the word of God. Okay, um, supernatural gift of wisdom. What is the supernatural gift of wisdom? And who can show me in the Bible where it's used? What, what's, the, what's, what's the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is always going to show a future event. See, this is used by a prophet most times. Or, like Agabus the prophet, who said, uh, he who, uh, he took the, the Paul's girdle, and he took the girdle and he bound his hands with it like this, and he said, he who owns this will be bound like this in Jerusalem. Then Paul went on to say that every city that he went into, every church that he entered, they all bore witness to his bounds. They all told him, don't go to Jerusalem. Right? Because they all knew, by the Spirit, that he was going to be bound in Jerusalem. Okay? That's the word of wisdom. Now, a word of knowledge. What's the word of knowledge? Who can speak up? Tell me what a word of knowledge is. Brother. Uh, when you know something about somebody that you would never possibly know. Yeah. So God is revealing something to you. A word of knowledge. Um, uh, that can be used together with healing, where you know somebody's hurting. You don't know this person, never met them before, but you say, hey, do you got this pain like right there? And they say, yeah, how'd you know that? Oh, and, and when you got the word of knowledge, people are always asking you that. How'd you know that? How'd you know that? How'd you know that? How'd you know that? That's a good sign. That's a good... And, and when you talk to, when we talk about ministries later, and we talk about offices, there's, a, there's another one that gets missed by some people. There, there's prophets. But just like there's prophecy, and there's different things inside of prophecy, like there's a... Uh, it says, he that prophesies speaks to men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Well, there is a word of comfort. There is a word of exhort exhortation. And there is a word of edification. Okay, those are word gifts. Those are words. And so that breaks down. And that's why when you're reading throughout the other Bible and you understand these things, then you understand that the writer of Hebrews said, I've written you a small letter, so suffer the word of exhortation. See, that's what that is. The word of exhortation. He that prophesies speaks to men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. So that's where they, they, they break down even more. So, um, so, yes, the supernatural word of knowledge um, by the same Spirit. To another, faith. Who can tell me what, because this is, this is not just faith. The faith is given every man, the Scripture says. This is supernatural faith. Who can tell me what that is? How, what does it look like? It would be an unfailing, how can I say this? Like you, um, all right, to me, I hope this is right. Supernatural faith would be when Jesus was walking across the ocean and he told Peter to come to him and Peter started to walk across the ocean because he had supernatural Praise faith. Praise the Lord. That's a good manifestation of faith, okay? And Amen. true, Jesus as fully God and fully man. Uh, how about another man that's not Jesus exercising the gift of faith, brother? Uh, yeah. Those, uh, when they had so much faith that they were walking by and healing people in the shadow. 
Okay, yeah. How about yeah. when um, the disciples, who didn't have the faith at that time, um, tried to cast the devil out of somebody and they couldn't? Oh, yeah. And then Jesus yeah. said, well, um, so can we see now why we might want this gift of faith, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, he says, uh, well, he says your faith, but nevertheless, this kind normally doesn't come up but by prayer, prayer and fasting. And then we see uh, Paul, yes? How about the centurion? Now, yeah. he's, he's, a, he's a Gentile. And this happened before the crucifixion and the resurrection. But he had faith. Mm. Yeah, that his servant would be healed. Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah. Without yeah. Jesus, yeah. Good, faith. good faith. Good faith. Oh, yeah, right. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wasn't there another one where, where someone um, came to Christ? Uh, their child was dying. That, that, that was a great faith. And yes, that's a great faith. But um, along with this, I want to see it. I want to see it more in the church as, as a supernatural manifestation. And so we do see it. And, and I'll, I'll end with this one uh, just so I can go on. Um, we see it with Paul when he cast the spirit of divination out. Oh, um, he wasn't even near her. Right. right. She was, he was just praying. Yep. And so and it came out within the same hour. Shows that it's a gift of faith. Amen. Okay. It came out within the same hour. Um, okay, so faith by the same Spirit, and to another, the gifts of healing. Now, notice, this is the only uh, manifestation here, or the only gift, that is plural. Everything else is singular. Now, also, if you look in the Greek, both of these, where it says, the gift of healings, it's the gifts of healings. Okay, who can tell me what that looks like? Because... These signs will follow them that believe, right? We can all lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. What's the difference here? Who can spit it up? A broken bone yeah. or something. Something more than sickness. Okay. Um, so you're saying um, gifts of healings. Okay, so why gifts of healings? Yes. Okay, so what, uh, first of all, let me say you're right in what you're talking about. You're talking about a, um, a creative work. Okay, a creative work. This is somebody where they don't have a joint anymore, but they grow a new one. This is um, a, a, an awesome experience that we had was um, um, the blind Shane. woman. Hmm? Yeah, the blind woman. We were praying for the blind woman. Oh, amen. Amen. Um, uh, Jesus, when he took mud and spit on it, right? Okay, so that's Jesus, you know, but again, <coughs> talking about created, created an eyeball. Okay, so, um, and uh, we had an unbeliever one time when we were out ministering in Lawrence, and uh, he called us up. We just happened to be on the way out there, too, and his wife had fallen down. Now, this is a man that, you know, I said, you've got to come out with us. You've got to come out with us. You can see. Now, he believed in gifts. He just didn't believe in the, the uh, miraculous gifts, the power gifts. You know, and we're just like, you know, because we're seeing people get up out of wheelchairs. We're seeing people getting delivered. We're seeing things happen, right? I'm like, just come out with us. Come out with us. Well, he didn't do that. But he did call us one time when we were on the way up there. And he says, my wife fell down and she hit. And I'm not saying God does this all the time. He doesn't. Okay. You know, uh, I'm sorry, but he just doesn't. She fell down her eye on a corner of a table. Her eyeball. Her, she, she was out like this. It was all black and blue. Her eye was frozen shut. She couldn't open it. She couldn't put her glasses on because, you know, she couldn't because it was swollen out so much. And um, we're going out to Lawrence and he just says, you know, well, now's the time. Come on. Come over here. Pray for my wife. And so it was me and Mark, Mark Frost, and um, Shane was with us. And I said, well, we have an extra guy with us today. We have Shane with us. Is it okay if he comes over too? He says, he asked his wife, and she said, yeah, she's okay with it. So now here's Shane, and he's been going to church with us now for about a year and a half. I mean, he's a miracle himself. But he says, he told me later, he says, Mike, he says, I never took my eye off her eye. When you guys were praying, I never took my eye off. I believe he has a gift of faith. I believe it came from him. I really do. Okay, but... Um, but we're praying for this lady. And he's like, he's looking at her. We're praying for her. This is only like two or three minutes. And he looks at her and he says, I think your eye's getting better. She says, yeah, I think I can open it. She, when she opened her eye, all the swelling went away. There was no black and blue anymore. There was a little tiny, by the time we left, a little tiny red line. <laughs> and that was on a Tuesday night, Wednesday. Were you guys there? When, when Shane stood up in front of the church and said, you know what, I've been coming here for over a year. And he says, I've been, I, you know, he says, I never really believed. <laughs> you know, people go up there, they get prayed for. And, you know, I see him say that, you know, their knee hurt, but now it don't hurt no more and everything. He says, I didn't really believe. And he stood up in front of the whole church and he says, I believe. <laughs> I believe. Because he saw this with his own eyes. So this is, um, okay, uh, a gift of healings. What, what, where else do you see this? I think you see this where, uh, where people can believe, uh, 
Sometimes uh, it's their faith, sometimes. You know, there's all kinds of different healings, isn't there? Uh, Paul, through the word of knowledge, he perceived that he had the faith to be healed. Well, he had the faith to be healed. Well, how about other times when it's not about him, it's about you. It's about something that you're believing for him. You're birthing him. Paul says that, that he births us. You know, that he birthed the Galatians. And, you know, now he has to rebirth them, right? You know, um, to the Philippians, he says, um, you, you, he that started the work in you is going to complete it to the day of Christ. How could he say that about him? How could he say that? Well, because he said, you are in my heart. You're now a partaker of my grace. See, they can't believe for themselves. They can't. So we have this for gifts of healings, right? So some people, okay, get this. Let's say let's say a wheelchair, okay? Um, usually, it's not that person, because I've seen this. It's not the person that goes and, and that starts out going to pray for something. Usually, he gets pushed into it. And you guys will get pushed into stuff, okay? I'll help you, okay? I'll push you. Um, people get pushed into things, and, and I hope you're of that. You know that you that you don't get offended if I push you into something. But you know, pray for this guy. Like, what do you mean, pray for? You know, pray for him. Okay, well, so he goes over and he prays for him, and what happens? The guy gets on a wheelchair. Whoa! See that? He got on a wheelchair. You know, now you know what he's got. He's got faith. What has he got faith for? He's got faith for people in wheelchairs. Does he have faith for blind people? No. He has faith. If, look, I, if you're blind, I'm sorry. Mm. But if you're in a wheelchair, I know you can get out. <laughs> because I prayed for the guy and he got out. So I'm going to pray for everybody in a wheelchair. I'm just going to do it, right? It's in him. That's, okay? that's, uh, that's the principle of recording your faith being measured up to you. Amen. So. Amen. And, and somebody else is the blind people. You know, somebody pushed into it and said, pray for this blind guy. Okay, final play. Wow, you really got healed. You know, I'm sorry about the guy in the wheelchair, but so he's blind, I can pray for him, right? So this is, it's my perception, okay? And, you know, can Mike be wrong? Oh, yes, I can be wrong, but make sense out of it better than I make out of it, and then come and tell me, I'll take it. Okay, so gifts of healings. And, um, you know, anybody that reads Facebook, I mean, look, I got I got woke up at like 2 o'clock in the morning, right? I mean, look, you can't make this stuff up, man. I got it. 2 o'clock in the morning, the Lord showed me a vision of Linda's goldfish going, <laughs> laying on the floor. And then God tells me the, the fish jumped out of the bowl. He's laying on the floor. He's gasping for breath. He's dying. Mike, go over there and save the fish. And you know what? I answered back and I said, the fish is in the goldfish bowl. He, he's fine. There's nothing wrong. And I laid there. Man, I laid there for 20, 30 minutes. You know what I learned, though? I learned I'm not going to sleep. That's what I learned. And he, God wasn't going to let me go to sleep. And so you know what I did? I said, okay. I, you know, it's here God. You know, so do we... Do, I, I say, okay. I, I'm like, um, okay, Lord. Right? Because I'm arguing with God. I say, okay, Lord. I know I'm not going to sleep, so I'm going to go back there, I'm going to go on my computer, I'm going to work on like this, or, you know, I'm going to work on something, you know, I'm going to do something, because I surely can't sleep. So I get up out of bed, I start heading toward uh, my back office room, and, um, and the Holy Spirit speaks, you better turn on the light, you better look in that goldfish bowl. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you know, and, and the whole thing is, I think I got to do that, because like, you know, because now I'm starting to think Linda is going to be so sad, right? It, you know, if that goldfish dies, she is going to be so sad, you know? And so I'm thinking, you know, like, and then I'm going to have to blame it on myself. Okay, fine. I turn on a look. And you don't have glasses on, like, right now, right? I can't, I can't see any of you right now, okay? Um, um, so, so I turn the light on, and I just go out and look in the bowl, and I'm like, I pick up the bowl, and I'm like, <laughs> but she's there, I'm looking around, and it's, you know, goldfish, he's not in the bowl, he's not on the floor. Linda says, what are you doing? Right, because I got the light on in the kitchen. And... Uh, I'm like, I'm looking for your goldfish, and I look down, it's like all the way over there by the door, you know, and it's just laying there, and I'm like, I found it. <laughs> and I go over, I pick him up, and he's dry and crusty and... Full of like whatever he rolled around on the on the ground and picked up, right? And he's just grinding crusty and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> I should have got up. But then he goes, Twickle. I go, Oh cool. I dropped through him in the bowl and he starts swimming around. I'm like, Praise the Lord. Okay, so so I gotta draw a conclusion. So he just got love goldfish. You know, does he love Linda? You know, I mean what is this? Is he save is he having me save this goldfish for because he loves Linda, because he loves the goldfish, or because he's testing me and trying to get me to listen to him. To listen. You know, and, and I do that all the time. You know, I argue with him all the time. He tries to tell me something. I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, but, um, you know, so, yes, we, we're all growing. We're all growing. 
Praise the Lord. But we have to be open, like your brother said. Be watching and, and be waiting available. for the moments and be available, yeah. right? Yeah. Praise the Lord. And I think I, let me just finish up, um, if it's okay with you guys. Is it okay if I just, because this is only half a verse, sure, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so we have um, miracles. Working, okay, so working we got the healings miracles. and then working of miracles. Who can tell me what working of miracles is? Anybody real quick? Working of miracles? Did anybody something. know these gifts existed? Did you know that you could have these? I mean, these are some pretty right. cool gifts, Delaying right? Delaying on the hands and curing someone. Okay, so Nothing working of miracles is usually something like that goes against nature. Right. Okay, goes against nature. So The multiplication know, of the loaves. Yeah, well, uh, Good. Um, drop a rock. What's gravity going to do? Right. It's going to. It's going to. Okay. Well. Um, things that go against nature. Working miracles. Um, discerning spirits. Who can tell me what it is? Knowing when it's God and when it's not. Knowing that. Okay. You know. Come on, chime in, anybody. See, discerning see, spirits. See, you know, see, godly or. Evil spirits and knowing yeah. the difference. Is this Perfect. Thank you, Lewis. Because because most people that get discerning of spirits, they start out discerning all the wicked things, all the evil things. Uh, it took me years to discern good things to know that I could discern good things. Right. So you're discerning not only demonic spirits, but you're discerning angelic spirits. Uh, you know, this is the thing where um, be not forgetful to entertain strangers. For some that entertain mm -hmm. angels unawares. Did you know you can see that? Uh, did you know you can see, uh, like, uh, Jesus talked to John the Baptist about seeing the, the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man? You know, um, when we get to chapter 13 and we start looking at the, um, um, the, the best view of these gifts or the higher view of them, like speaking in tongues, but do I speak in the tongues of men and of angels? Um, great faith to move mountains, right? Um, so, you know, add, uh, how about this? The gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Okay, this is the things to shoot for. Okay, uh, and, you know, did you know God's not a respecter of persons? Did you know that you can, you, you look at your, I mean, these things were written for our examples. They're, they're just showing us, these are all testimonies. We live by our testimony. They're showing us what we can do. Okay, because God's not a respecter of persons. You could be Daniel. You can do the things that Daniel did. You can do the things that... Uh, Abraham did. You can you can be a friend of God, right? I mean, in this sense, and really walk in that, right? We can do it all. You know, we can be any any Bible example that we see that you like. You can have that relationship with God. God doesn't withhold that from you. You can have that. We can all have that. Okay. So I'm sorry. Get off. Discerning of spirits um, to another diverse kinds of tongues. Well, um, what is this? Because we're we're talking about a gift of tongues, right? Diverse kinds of tongues. So what's what what's the diff? Because not everybody speaks, and not everybody has this gift, right? Not everybody has this gift. Um, just like okay, well we don't all okay, we can all have the gift of prophecy, but we're not all prophets, right? Well, the same the same principles here that um, we can all speak in tongues, but we don't all have the gift of tongues. Okay? Can I ask a really dumb question? It okay, just come into my head. All right, I've, I've spoken in tongues like you like you said. Would that also include, say, for instance, we'll say, we'll say in an emergency and you're in a foreign country and you need to converse, like say you've collapsed in this, and I need to tell people to get you a doctor. Yeah. Would that include being able to say speak French or speak Spanish or speak German? It has to, um, because of uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, that example, and because of Cornelius uh, with the Gentiles, yeah. it, it means that. Um, so Paul uh, specified tongues of men, tongues of angels, right? Um, he also said that, um, as far as prayer languages go, uh, that he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Oh, so when you speak in this tongue, you don't speak to man, you speak to God, for no man understands him. Albeit in the Spirit, he speaks mystery. And that's why you need the gift of interpretation. This is talking about a supernatural <coughs> language, supernatural tongue. But we see that there are other natural tongues that people hear them speak in their own language. Really? If you find yourself in a situation like what you just ask, you're in a foreign country and you don't speak the language, what you're probably going to use, you won't use tongues, you'll use hands mm -hmm. to describe what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. And I, if you, I've been in that situation. That, that's good, brother, and yeah. what she's talking about is a supernatural gift and a supernatural yeah. happening of God, so I'd have to answer and say, yes, you know, you probably use your hands too and you'll probably speak in a tongue, but you probably won't understand what you're saying, but the person that's listening will. 
when okay. the Holy Spirit fell on them and they all started speaking. They started speaking. Each one heard them in their own tongue, their mm -hmm. own native tongue. Yeah. Uh, there, and started. there's lots of ways to look at that and understand that. But what we yeah. do have to do is we do have to look at, in the context of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, um, and see that um, the, the gift of tongues that he's talking about and the um, speaking in tongues that he is talking about here in this place is not talking about known languages. He's talking about unknown languages. He's talking about praying in tongues and speaking in tongues. And he's talking about speaking in tongues with interpreters. It's, and what are they doing? Um, they're prophesying. They're bringing forth revelation. This is all about Jesus bringing revelation to the Gentiles. This is all about him leading us and guiding us into all truth. This is all about him teaching us. This is the way it's done. It's supernatural. Or another way to put it is building up the body. To the fullness of the yeah. Oh yeah, and there, you know he pointed out many different reasons for uh, speaking in tongues, many different reasons for prophesying, many different reasons for interpreting tongues, um, and, and he covered all the reasons. You know, one he, he said if the trumpet blown uncertain sound, who's going to prepare himself to battle, right? So he's bringing up Ezekiel thirty three, which is the watchman. His blood would be required at your hand. You know, you're not warning the people. That's one. And then he and then he says, well. Um, um, oh, he, he quoted Isaiah 28, where he said, For with men of other tongues and lips will he speak to this people, yet for all that they will not hear me, saith the Lord. That was prophecy. They will not hear me. Another time is, well, if the whole church become together and everybody's prophesying, there comes in an unlearned person or unbeliever, what happens? He falls down in his face. He worships God. Uh, an unbeliever gets saved. See, there's lots of reasons. But let me finish this. Diverse kinds of tongues. Um, so, diverse kinds of tongues is... Um, just what it says. Many different kinds of tongues. Not the pearl language, not just one tongue, but this is diverse kinds of tongues. Many different languages or tongues. And then uh, to another, the interpretation of tongues. That's, uh, I think we all know what that is. And then watch this, and then we'll close here. But all these work, all those gifts that we just talked about, all, but all these work at that one and self same spirit, dividing to, does it say most men severally as he will? These are the gifts that we're supposed to seek. These are the gifts that we're supposed to desire. Um, and these are the gifts that are going to bring us revelation. They're going to um, uh, bring us closer to God. And I will just make one stipulation. As he's telling us how to seek these gifts and how to seek after these gifts, how to covet these gifts, how to like really, really, really desire them, um, that's one way to get them, Okay, to desire them, to seek after them. But then he says this. In the context of desiring them and seeking after them, he says this. But let me show you a more excellent way. Oh, let me show you a more excellent way to what? It, we can either seek the gifts or we can seek the giver of the gifts. Mm -hmm. um, and there, you know, so this keep in mind. I, I never sought after spiritual gifts. Okay, and I don't now. Uh, and like I say to Linda, and she gets mad at me. <clears throat> when I say it, like, like I'm saying it now, you poop the gifts out, okay? You seek the giver of the gifts. You seek God. You go forward in God. You, you're obedient to God. You do what he says. What does it say? These signs will follow them, I believe, okay? So you seek the giver of the gifts. You, you're not seeking the gifts, okay? But you're seeking the giver. You're seeking the giver. You're seeking the giver. And you go, oh, wow, what was that? What was that? What was that? You know, they're, they're behind you. You know, that's, that's just what happens. Because you want a close relationship with God. You want to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You want to be available, right? Be available for yes. You know, you're just seeking God, seeking what He wants. The gifts will happen. They'll just happen. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the way I like to teach is, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing. Do what you're programmed to do. Look, in your DNA are these gifts. God already put them into you. That's what He did with Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 1. And um, praise the Lord. Um, I, I guess I'll have to specifically say what new person would like to close us in prayer. Because I know Liz, you would close us in prayer in just a second. And I love you. You're That's awesome. You Who would like to close us in prayer? Well, we thank you for teaching us. We thank you that we're all free to gather here in your name and learn about your word and be edified and admonished, Lord by your word. Thank you that you've given these gifts to your body and that you desire that we walk in them but first seek you Lord and walk in love. Thank you Lord for supplying all that we need each day for taking care of our families and for bringing <coughs> us all to unity of mind. Mind, heart, and spirit Lord. <coughs> Breathing each one of us alike. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I thank you for all this. All of my brothers.
just to see if it's the right procedure. Let's just see if we can 